Let's keep calm and mother on. Mothering is way too important to do alone and way too serious to be serious all the time. My name is Christy Thomas, and I am here shoulder to shoulder with you, mothering and enjoying life together. This is the podcast where you can focus on being mindful and taking a deep breath with me and learning new things so you can pause and savor the amazing life you already have. Now let's go. I am over the moon that the orange rhino is back online. She is here today as a guest. Um, I totally followed her blog way back when, and then she took a break, and now she's back, and she's here. Welcome, Sheila. <laughs> I thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Um, I want to tell you that we didn't use the orange rhino in my house. My kids heard that idea and then we used the green giraffe. They like had that to make it their good. own, but we that totally had a code word and we still have a code word. Do you still use yeah. that system? I, you know what we do? My youngest one absolutely does. And they all, what's really cool is they remember it. And they just know the symbolism of it. Yeah. Like they know that it's like trying to yell less and just keep our cool and watch our tone. So it's still it's still out there. OK, so in case people weren't on the Internet 10 years ago and found <laughs> you like I did, can you tell us a little bit about you and who you are and what you do? Yeah. So 10 years ago, I had four boys. I still have four boys. Yeah. Um, they were all <laughs> under the ages of five. And I had just finished a year long renovation at my house and I had gone through that pregnant with three boys oh, at that goodness. time. Right. So I had like exposed wires, electrical wires everywhere, beams, nails, like my heart rate chaos. is racing. <laughs> it just not easy. Right. And like a one and a half year old at that time. And for those nine months, I didn't yell at my kids because I had these workers in my home and I was so worried what they were going to think of me. Mm hmm. Fast forward, the baby's born, the construction's complete, and I'm using, um, I'm either nursing or I'm using the breast pump, and three of my boys are like having a full blown battle with all the extra parts. <laughs> and I lost it. As, and I screamed. As kids do. Yeah. As kids do. What else are you supposed to do with the, you know, the extra tubing? You uh -huh. whip them, right? So I lost it and I screamed. And then I heard this voice, and it was the handyman. He's like, oh, hi. And I just, I, I was mortified and it kind of hit me and I'm like, wait a second for almost a year. I kept my cool because I was so worried about what these gentlemen thought of me, but my audience is my kids. They are always going to be with me. The, the workers left. I need to be worried about what my kids think of me. And it was just this light bulb moment of, I got to get this yelling under control. And to be honest, it wasn't that, 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 that bad. I think we're, we're our own worst critics of how bad Absolutely. it was. Absolutely. Um, but so from that point, I said, okay, like jokingly, I'm going to go a year straight without yelling. I'm a cold turkey person. That's what works for me. Yeah. Um, and my husband at the time, I'm since divorced after one day of not yelling, he's like 364 days to go. And I'm like, oh, I was joking. He's like, and I'm like, I'm the rise to the challenge kind of person. You're like, um, okay, let's up, go. <laughs> okay, here we go. So I ended up going 520 days Wow. without yelling. Um, and I ended up writing a blog about it. It's called, you know, the Orange Rhino, and um, it was a great experience. I learned a lot. I I do yell now. I'm human. We all <laughs> yell. Yells happen. It's not the end of the world. It does not define me as a parent. Um, so that's kind of the the backstory. And now they're all teenagers. It's a totally different ball game. It, it's a completely different ball game. We were talking a little bit before I hit record here about how, especially sharing online with about teenagers is super hard. And so I want to put this disclaimer out here because other moms who have little kids might not think about this yet about consent and posting and how to share kindly about your kids and about your own struggles. And that's something I think you're doing really well. Oh, I appreciate that. It's um, it's hard because I do have to think, what are my what are my sons if they they're not on Facebook or Instagram? They really don't love me for that. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I'm I'm very protective of social media in that regard for them because I know how cruel it can be. I've experienced how cruel social media is. But I do think like, how would they feel if they if they read what I wrote? Or how would they feel if one of their friend's mothers read what I wrote and kind of talked about it, you know? So 
when I talk about a hard time I'm going through, I kind of go through a filter. Um, and I'm also trying to teach them, listen, whatever you put on the internet, it's there. <laughs> it will be picked apart. You cannot control what comes back and you cannot take it back. Um, yep. So I do talk to them. If I share a story about them, I'm always checking in. Can I share this? Can I not? Um, but it's tricky because I got to say, we don't give our kids enough credit with yeah. what we can learn from them. And my boys have a lot of awesome gems and insights. If um, And I would love to share more than I can. Yes. You know, because they're just, <laughs> they're, they're full of knowledge. Right. But some of their stories are just for them and for you. Yep. Yep. And that's important. So, so when you did this 520 days, is that what you said? 526? Yeah. 520? 520. Okay. So when you did 520 days of not yelling, what tips helped you the most? Like, how did you grit your teeth? Like, if yelling is part of someone's core response, that's a lot of energy to change it. It It is a lot of energy. And I think what I, I just finished a 30-day challenge that I ran. And, you know, what I tell people is, expect it to be hard and that's okay, right? Yeah. And expect to yell. Yelling <laughs> is actually kind of part of the process because that's how you learn. Like all moments in parenting are important. We learn from the good moments. We will learn from the tough moments. I don't yeah. really call them bad moments. Right. Because they're just, they're tough moments. They're just that opportunities. We, they're opportunities to learn. So, you know, in the beginning, the first day, I think I fell asleep, the kids went to sleep. I was out. Like I, I <laughs> laid down in bed. And I zonked out because it did take a lot, a lot of energy, mental energy, physical energy, like you name it. Um, but in the beginning, like I did some very basic things. I wore orange mm -hmm. just as a reminder of the orange rhino. I had signs up around the house. Again, visual reminders truly do do work. I had some close friends that knew of the challenge and they were on, you know, I'm going to text you just like <laughs> instead of yelling. Yeah. Um, so like that helped with support. You made a village. I would, I made a village. Like I had that community. I'd go online. I'd share. I'd share there. Um, and you know, and the other thing I did is I wrote down, I like on little post-it notes every time I yelled, which again, a lot of energy, totally annoying. No one wants to do it, but that's where the learning came from. And it took me, I think eight or nine tries and a couple of weeks to yeah. really get into a rhythm. But once you get into that rhythm and you get the reward of how great it feels, mm -hmm. it just kind of snowballs, you know? Yeah. Um, and because it, it does, it feels, it feels great. And in so many aspects of your life, when you don't yell, it really just, everything starts to feel more chill yeah. and more enjoyable, you know? What I realized when I tried it was that um, calm is really powerful. Like I didn't need yes. to be loud to be powerful. Yes. yes. I think, you know, they say hindsight's 50, 50. It's, um, I look back and I'm like, gosh, I wish I, I wish I knew, right. I wish yeah. I knew then when I was parenting my younger kids, but the first line of, of defense or even offense, if you want to look at it that way is you got to calm the situation mm -hmm. before you do anything else. You cannot teach when a kid is upset. No. You cannot teach when you're upset. No one's hearing it. So when you come into a situation and your child's having a tantrum, you have to be chill. That is your tool. Yeah. Right? Uh -huh. So like yelling, once I once I realized that yelling doesn't work, <laughs> it's like, well, why am I doing it? Like it's just not going to get me where I want to go. Suddenly not yelling became so much easier. Yeah. Because I'm like, this is counterproductive. All it does is rev my child up more. And then I realized that if I, if I stayed composed or stayed calm, we were able to get somewhere. I'm like, okay, this is the path worth, it's worth putting energy yeah. into figuring this out. So when you wrote your sticky notes initially of like moments that made you yell, did you able to, were you able to find a pattern to like yes, help like, yourself out? Is that what you were able exactly. to discover? So like I took, like at the end of the day, I'd kind of go through all the little notes and it's like, okay, what are the patterns? What are there times of day where I'm yelling the mm -hmm. most? Are there places? I mean, definitely one of them was getting out the door. I think everyone <laughs> that is relate. one of the listener questions is, do you have any tips for the angry mom in the morning? You know, there's several things. When they were much younger, I, I put orange post-it notes on backpacks okay. just as like almost like a, a mental stop sign. Yeah. Um, one thing I started saying to myself as they got a little older was, 
it's okay if you're late. It is not the end of the world. We like put just, so much judgment on ourselves all the time. So much, so much. And it's just a mindset mindset shift. Like, what's the worst that's going to happen? Like, yeah, some days it is really bad. Like, mm-hmm. you have an important meeting and it stinks. But really, what, like, truly, that what's the worst that's going to happen? That moment of stinking is really short compared to... Really short. Mm-hmm. And when we rush our kids... Like, same thing at bedtime. Guess what? <laughs> it makes it take longer, right? So, like, when we're rushing our kids in the morning, hurry, 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 and we're yeah. angry with them, or brush your teeth or do this, it slows them down. Yeah. It's like, again, realizing that, I'm like, okay, just chill. And even now with teenagers, but you think getting out the door is hard when they're young? It changes. Wait till they have to be at school uh-huh. even earlier, which I still don't get. That's a whole different discussion. Um, so I think just, you know, shift in mindset, remembering it's not an emergency. It's okay yeah. if you're late. Yeah. Um, going slower actually will get you there faster. Yeah. That's what you know? I learned. That was one of my sticky notes I had to put up. Go yep. slow to go fast. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, um, the other one I had up was if I go fast, it will take slow. Like it will go slow. The opposite. Like to remind yeah. myself, like if I rush them, I'm just going to cause pain. Totally. Um, and something I've even just learned lately that I wish again I had known earlier is I have this like kind of concept of like injecting calm into yeah. the day. So like if I know that the morning rush stinks. Mm-hmm. Okay, five minutes before, what can I do to kind of get into a better mindset? Like, do I need to listen to a happy song? Mm -hmm. Do I need to drink coffee? Sometimes coffee revs me up, so maybe not a good idea. Right. Do I need to get some fresh air? So like planning, once you know your triggers, the key in that is that you can plan ahead and you can prepare for them. So when they happen, you're like, oh, I got this. I know what I'm going to do. Yeah. It's, so it's allowing yourself to be human too and to take care of your own totally. needs. Totally. I think, um, it's like one of my favorite phrases is like, I'm the orange rhino, but I'm still human. Yeah. Um, and to that point, like, yes, I went 520 days without yelling. And yes, my book is about yell less, love more. However, <laughs> yelling happens and it's okay. And I think There's a lot of parental shame out there in general and a lot of parental pressure. And I just want anyone listening to know that, like, it is okay if you yell. Like, I am (laughs) not here to tell you you have to not yell. Um, It happens. And it is not the end of the world. It does not define you as a parent. It does not make you a bad parent. Your child still loves you. That is so not what they are going to grow up remembering. You know, if it's a huge major problem. I think that's like kind of different, but Uh even then it's about showing up and loving your kid. And if you care enough to be like, wait, maybe I should yell less. You're a great parent. Like that's just an If you're worrying about this. Yeah. Yes. Um, so yes, so it's, it is. So be human and you do have to take care of yourself. Um, that was like one of the biggest, I don't want to say like slap in your face, but like aha moments when I was going through my challenge of, the whole, like, yeah, I tell the story in my book when I broke up with this guy post college. I'm like, oh, it's not you, it's me. And I was totally lying. Yeah. It's totally him. But with like my kids, it's, it's the truth. It's not them. They're not the reason I'm yelling. Oh, yeah. It's, it's me. It's totally me. I have to take care of myself because when you come to a situation where you're triggered, the number one tool, <laughs> it is not your parenting toolbox, it is yourself. <gasps> You are the tool. Absolutely. Um, Like you have to take care of yourself throughout the day. You have to put yourself first, self-care, being human. um, And it's really hard to do. It is. It's hard to embrace that. Yeah. I have a, I have a, a coaching club I have called the Good Enough Mom Society. And it's all Mm. about taking care of the mom, right? Like being able to pause and notice and add a little bit more mindfulness. Like I can't teach you how to actually parent your kids, but I can help you figure out how to pause and slow down. Totally. And I, I'm just, I think I realized that 10 years ago, but I've had a lot more (laughs) clarity. I think, um, you know, I, like I same with yelling, like every moment's an opportunity. You know, when I, I went 520, 520 days without yelling. 
And then I yelled. Everyone's like, well, what happened? And what I'd never really just, you know, shared until recently was that I had a moment with my now ex-husband and I had been holding it all together and mm-hmm. it just, and it got to me. And then shortly after, um, you know, we went through a divorce and I had some really tough years where, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I yelled. Yeah. Like it's, it, it happens. It happens. And I will tell you, I met my neighbor across the street from one of my houses. We're a military family. So we've moved often and often have new neighbors. And I had to go apologize to the guy across the street, I felt like, because he heard me like yelling at one of my kids to get in the car. And I'm like, I am so ashamed that you heard that. And like, that's your impression of me now. Um, I, I had to do that a few times. After I wrote a book about not yelling, so that that was really humbling. It's and humbling. Hard. <laughs> it's hard embracing and hard it to, and hard to do. Um, but you know what I learned through that whole process of how hard it was was just again, like I really am the number one tool, and I have to find, I have to find more calm, and I have to prioritize myself. Um, so it was hard to go through that with my kids and I, I wish I'd been in a better place, but it is what it is. Mm -hmm. Like we go through different seasons of life yeah. and you do the best that you can in that moment with your situation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if that means you are yelling nine times that day, but that's your best. It's okay. If that means you're yelling two times because that's your season and that's what you can do. Awesome. But like just, there just needs to be more, um, I think acceptance of that, like we do the best we can. Yeah. And we're all, if you're worried about it or if you're loving your kids actively, like we're not neglecting anyone. We are trying, we're in the trenches and I'd rather be judged for my jello salad than how I interact with my kids. (laughs) Totally. And it's, it's hard to do that. I don't know about you, but like I worry about what other people you know, think of me. Absolutely. I am a better parent, I think, at the grocery store, right? Like you were with the the workers in your home. Like it's really hard when you're one-on-one with these humans and they know how to rub you. Like the sandpaper, I call it. Like they know my buttons. They know know how to rub against my skin just right to make me feel on edge. But like it's still my response. Yes. So how are you keeping yourself calm during these teenage years? What new tips have you discovered? What new systems Um, are working for you? I think a lot of it, a lot of it's mindset and perspective and just reminding myself of like little things. Like the number one thing I think with teenagers is it's not personal. (laughs) Um, One nugget I shared online, which with permission was I, my teenager and I were kind of bickering. Like that's what we do now is we, Uh we bicker. (laughs) I was getting frustrated. And at the end, he's like, did it ever dawn on you, mom, that this has nothing to do with you? And I'm like, (laughs) wait a second. Those are my own words. That's my own insight. Like, I'm not yelling at you because of you. It's my own issues. It never dawned on me that when he's bickering with me, it could be because of his own issues, right? Yeah. He's like, I had a bad day. This blah, 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 blah happened. That's why I'm bickering it with you. So I try to remember that. Like, I think for whatever reason, we so often forget that our kids are human too. Yeah. They have some of the same experiences we do. They have hard time with friends. They feel excluded. They have so many issues on social media. They have a hard time with teachers. They get bad grades. They don't feel accepted. I would not want to be a teenager today to save my life. Not one bit. I mean, middle school was hard when I was a kid would not it's would harder not now i i will so stand hard. on my soapbox and say it feels oh. much harder the world is smaller and bigger at the same time they can compare to everyone oh. around the whole globe like i was just talking to a friend like i had 17 magazine and that was like oh an mtv right <laughs> like those in vh1 those were my like comparison traps it wasn't like yes. the whole world at the tip of my finger no, and like if you got excluded from a party, you found out maybe a couple days later. Now you get excluded from party and you find out in five minutes because they're posting pictures. You online. find out as it's happening. Yeah. As it's happening and everyone's sharing about how much fun they're having without you. Um, so I think it's, I try to remind myself that it's not personal. It's, it's not about me. He's, you know, allowed to have bad days too. 
Um, one of the best tools, again, in our body is our two feet. It is okay to walk away. It does not mean I am ignoring him or I'm rejecting him. It's okay to say, hey, right now we're not hearing, you know, we're not in a mm-hmm. good place. Let's take a break. I love you. I'll be back. I'm walking away. I'm taking a break. You know, I always add that I will be back. Yeah. Um, it's hard to walk away, but sometimes like you can't get anywhere productive mm-hmm. if you're both like slightly elevated and heated, or even if just you're bickering or if you're in a bad mood, like you're not going to get. If you haven't anywhere. had a snack recently, if you slept poorly, if it's that yes. time in your cycle, like let's just put it all out there, right? Like there is a hundred totally. reasons why you yes. need to walk away and they're all valid. Yes. <sighs> and then, I mean, the, like the other one, again, back to like the human is especially as they've aged, like they're all coming into their own personality. And like uh-huh. I had this big aha recently with one of my sons, every morning he's a grouch. He <laughs> just wakes up yelling. And I'm like, what the bejeebers? And he's like, I'm not a morning person. He just, he's been saying it over and over again. And it wasn't registering. Now, mind you, my boyfriend is not a morning person. Yeah. He's a coffee mug that says, do not talk to me until I've <laughs> had my coffee. And I respect that. Like, I yeah. know, stay away for a good 30 minutes. Uh-huh. Why wasn't I giving the same respect to my son? Makes no sense. These are the questions to ask, right? I My middle kid, she uh, she wanders downstairs and like in the morning she just grunts. And like, I really want to have a conversation with her, but, but I can't. And it's really right. hard not to push the button. Really hard because it's a change in... It's such a change in dynamic from when Mm -hmm. they were like younger because now they do have their own personality and their mood shifted for what works for them. Um, so I try to remember that. Okay. Like this is, this is the new child, Mm -hmm. same, same person, but with some (laughs) added, added features. So this child I have to stay away from in the morning. It's really hard. The only words are, I love you. Have a great day at school. Have fun. Yep. But so just, you know, remembering that, um, and then really focusing on me more so than like anything else um, and trying to find like my own inner, like like inner sense of calm is, is helping me, I think, get through these years. Um, and I cry. I'm not going to lie. Like some of these days, are, they're hard. They are like hard. They're, they're hard. Um, and they're hard in a different way than little kids where I felt touched out. But they're both hard. Totally. And um And I was going to ask if we could sit here together and give a mom who has like those five-year-olds, right? A tip. What tip would you give a mom with littler kids right now sitting here with teenagers? So as someone who has a five-year-old Yeah, like if they're listening to us and they're like, okay, teenagers, but what do I do now? Because I have a five-year-old or a three-year-old. I think, you know, you you get through the day and you feel proud that you got through the day yep. and that's totally okay. Um, ignore any achievements <laughs> or whatever anyone else is doing. It doesn't matter. Love it's cliche, but love the time yeah. with your kids. And if you do not that day stinks and you do not have fun hanging out with them. Totally. Okay. Absolutely. Like, don't get stuck begrudging yourself for being a bad mom because it just, you will get stuck there and it it won't help you enjoy the next moment. Um, But I think I spent so much of my time when they were younger wanting to be better. Yeah. I would cry myself to to sleep, like wondering if I was the right mom for my kids. Yes. And I just, just enjoy it and know that you are, you are the right, you are doing your best. Yeah. Um, so I, I don't know. I, I think that's what I would say because it does go by fast. Yeah. And, and even now is with teenagers, I have to remind myself that I'm still the right mom for them. Like they need my, they need me to push up against and they need me to learn how to walk away and take care of myself and all of this modeling of self care because they're bigger and I have a little bit more wiggle room of free time, right? Like I'm yep. not going to call poison control if I leave the room anymore. Um, The Sharpie won't be driven, like, (laughs) like all the things, right? Like I used to rush going to the bathroom because there was going to be some sort of disaster. And now I could take a long bath if I wanted to. And they'd be like, where'd you go? 
Um, right. And it's important, I think, to show them, to show them that, because I mean, it's one thing, you know, as I think about it, that I'm learning more about myself is I wish I knew, I guess, when I was younger, how to be, I don't want to say how to be calm, um, how to get to a more chill place. Yeah. Right. So if I, it's not so much about yelling, but like when I'm feeling agitated or cranky or overwhelmed, I wish I knew the tools to get to a more calm place younger so I could have modeled it. If there's anything I could have taught my kids more. Forget the ABCs, forget music, forget all of that. I wish I could have showed them how to get to a more calm place because that is a skill they will take throughout life. How to respond to emotions. Yes. Yes. I mean, we do a lot of, we always talk about emotions. I mean, I do like the phrase name it to tame it. Yeah. I think that's a good one. I mean, that's a good one for little kids. Like, you know, and talking out loud. Oh, wow. I'm like, for me, I'm feeling really angry. This happened, blah, 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 mm-hmm. blah. I'm not putting my emotions onto my kids. I'm right. But sharing it and sharing, sharing the magic it. processes. Like I bet yes. girls and one of them is on social media. And I'm like, when I scroll through Instagram and see someone's perfect house and feel jealous, I'm working on saying, oh, man, I really should turn off Instagram right now because I'm feeling this way. Like it's not yeah. helpful to be on social media. <laughs> yeah. The modeling is so um, important. I read something somewhere. Um, I think it was Rachel Macy Stafford, hands free uh, mama about, you know, what teenagers, you know, who they listen to the most, mm-hmm. most. It was about like their teachers. And it just, it really made me stop and think in regards to, to all kids and all people. It's like, who do they listen to the most? Right. Like who do they find? Like which basketball players for my kids, which leaders, which mm-hmm. teachers, what is it they're doing? Yeah. And how can I, as a mom, like almost emulate that yeah. in a, in a mom type of way? Right. You, you, know, you get to be you, listening. but how can you copycat what's working? Yes. You know, and those, those people don't lecture, <laughs> right? They're, they listen, they talk, don't lecture, which is hard. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, they give trust. Like, I know you can figure this out. Yes. And that's, I will say with one of my teenagers, um, that was the magic. That was the secret. We were butting heads and he's like, I need, I need more space. And he was right. I said, (laughs) okay. Yep. I will, I will let you fly. We will try. If it does not work, we will come back in and the, my rule is going to go back in place. And he rose to the occasion. And there's a quote, I'm going to get it totally wrong. It's like your kids, your kids become what you believe them to be. Yeah. Isn't that true about us though too? Absolutely. Like if your boss, I think you can totally do this. I'm going to rise to that occasion. If we think our kids can do something and believe and, and live towards that dream, mm-hmm. they will rise to it. Um, letting go of our teens and giving them more space, especially even to fail mm-hmm. or to do, but um, to manage their own time and their responsibilities. There's so much of that learning in my house right now. And a lot of me walking away and taking deep breaths and going to the bathroom and splashing water on my face. Yes. <laughs> well, cold, I mean, cold water. There's, I mean, that is, I just, I personally just got onto Instagram because I took a long social media break because yeah. of how harsh it wasn't very nice to me for a little while. Mm-hmm. Um, but like, I'm seeing it for what it is, which is information and it's about cold water really does help. So yeah. just as like another tip, when you're starting to feel like you're escalating, like a cold glass of water, Yep, super helpful. No joke. I put my head in the freezer. Everyone's like, you're weird. I'm like, no, open the freezer. I have the- an ice roller I got on Amazon yeah. that I used oh, for that same sort one. of thing. Like oh, it's like in the freezer all the time. And I was like, okay, <laughs> let that's me ice really roll my one. face. <laughs> and it makes me not too. talk. <laughs> You can't talk yes. when you're ice rolling. No, you can't. So, I mean, like anything cold, splash water, or yeah. cool ice, all of that actually helps like your nervous system to come, um, to come down a notch. I even, <laughs> I once recommended like tongue in cheek, but like no joke in the beginning, I said, yell into a toilet. Everyone's like, I'm potty training. I don't necessarily want to yell into a toilet. It's like, it's more the thought that in the beginning, do wherever you are, just learn to turn away. Mm-hmm. So you don't yell at your children. So you realize you can control your body, right? And if you're yelling at any inanimate object, clothes don't have feelings. If you're 
near the bathroom. Your toilet does not have feelings. I don't mean put your head in the toilet. Right. Just, and the toilet's not going to remember the moment. <laughs> exactly. So just so you realize that you can, you can not yell, like you are capable of it. It just, it's just like anything else. It takes practice. It's kind of like riding a bike. It's muscle memory. Yeah. Um, but you can, you know, people can do it. I'd like to say I have, uh, it's called sensory processing disorder. I don't really like the word disorder. Yeah. Um, but I've got some sensory stuff going on. I've got anxiety. I have depression every once in a while. I've got a lot going on. And I, I do believe if I can overcome how much I yelled, which was driven by a lot of sensory stuff, I really believe anyone can. Um, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I believe in people. So if they, anyone wants to do it, I think they can. And I totally recommend your book and your audio book. Like there are tools out there and yours are really kind and they're coming from a place that's like not an expert. I love your opening um, about how you're not a PhD. What did you say? You are a parent. A parent who has determination. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's all we need. Like you just need someone that feels like you so you can try the next step. Well, that's, I, I appreciate that because sometimes I'm like, well, wait, like, do people want someone with more credentials? And there's a lot of wonderful people there's out there. There's wonderful experts out there, but sometimes there, you just need are. the mom that's shoulder to shoulder with you. Well, that's, I'm, I am going through it, you know, day to day, figuring it out. And what's cool is that as I figured it out, um, Dr. Laura Markham, she's really cool. She actually wrote a review of my book. And as I went through it, the system I created, um, turns out everything in there is, scientifically backed so it's kind of cool that what i did is actually what you know someone should do um but i am in the trenches and you know the thing about learning to yell less and the thing about parenting and life and motherhood it is always changing because just as you figure out your child yeah they change and with that comes new triggers (laughs) because there's there's new behaviors and the other thing is when as your child changes it brings up a new memory about your own life. Yeah. And then wait a second, that's triggering something else. So it's, it's always evolving. It's a journey. Mm-hmm. Um, there's going to be times when you yell more and times when you'll yell less. And it's all, you know, it's all good. You know, I'm just, that's kind of like my new, I really, um, there's so much parental advice out there. Yeah. And I, I always get, I'm like, wait, people put me in. It's like, wait, you have a parenting book. I'm like, it isn't, it isn't. Um, because I think when I don't want parents to feel pressure to be better yeah, because that just makes us like, it gets so heavy. Yeah. We don't and need that, to strive or us. change. Like we're all already wonderful as we are. And I think we're always, I came to the belief that you're exactly the right mom for your kids. Like you just have to be like, it's right. It, it's, it's kind of like magic that you guys got matched together. Like, so you're going to be the right parent. If totally. you can I mean, just let else? yourself take a deep breath every once in a while. Every, you know, I like, it's funny that you say that because I often, especially with one of my kids lately and the, you know, and the added benefit of being divorced and having that, I'm like, am I the right parent and this and that, you know, I start questioning it. But as you say that our children come from us, yeah. right? Or however they come into yeah. our world. And we have the unique ability to share some of the same personality traits. Mm-hmm. We can understand what they're going through. We, my son, some of the stuff he goes through, I'm like, I get that. I can help you. Mm -hmm. Like I am, I am the right mom for him because as one of my sons struggles with some sensory stuff, I'm like, I get it. And I'm going to be more patient with you than so many other people. Yeah. Because I understand why you're a picky eater. Yeah. Uh, It's not the end of the world. You're going to eat real food someday. Yeah. I did. I was 25 when I ate real food. <laughs> I'm fine. <laughs> oh, I don't just eat that. Just fries. <laughs> that alone right there is making someone take a deep sigh of relief, right? Like we have more time than we think. You know, my mom likes to tell the story that I guess I really liked my crib and I slept in it forever and people would give her a hard time. You know, you should really take Sheila out of the crib. It's not good for her. And my mom said, she's not going to college in a crib. <laughs> she'll get out of the crib when she's ready. My mom is so much more laid back than I am, but I do remember that. And it's, yeah, 
I try to take that perspective when I'm starting to get anxious and worried about my kids, especially as teens. Like, are they going to get there? Are they going right. to do this? Or what's their path? And I'm like, Sheila, you have to remember they will get there. Yeah. Like they will. It's not the end of the world. And you're still getting there and I'm still getting there. Yes. It's just, um, you know, it's hard to, it's hard to remember that when things are, when things are crazy and chaotic, Mm -hmm. you know, it's hard to find perspective. Um, but that is, you know, that's another tip that I do a lot. Um, especially when they were younger and kids do all those things like drawing on the wall, (laughs) dropping things, flushing things down the toilet, glitter everywhere Um, in my house, (laughs) everywhere. Um, I use the word, the phrase, at least Mm -hmm. like one day my kids dropped an entire jug of milk and like, you don't want to, you want to scream, not because it's a big deal, but you're just, it's like one more thing that just to clean up. And I'm like, at least it wasn't a glass bottle. Yep. And it just kind of brings you down a notch. That's or a good like one. one one day I went to the bathroom for like what 30 seconds. And I uh-huh. came out, no joke, two of my boys, shirts off, <laughs> markers. They because we had been coloring. Uh-huh. They had decorated their whole bodies, <laughs> their faces, their chest, their arms. Total scene from like Madagascar. I think we've probably just seen the movie. And I wanted to like scream because I'm like, oh, seriously? But then I just paused and I'm like at least they look adorable. <laughs> you know, and I took a picture because it it was a memory. Um it's like when I can find perspective like in a tough moment. Yeah. You know, some people call it, you know, gratitude. Mm-hmm. I sometimes it's hard to be thankful. I agree. Gratitude is a loaded word for me. It's, it's thank you. Thank you. Thank gratitude you, is a really loaded word for me. So, Thank but you. perspective, being able to say at least or, oh, it's a beautiful mess when I found glitter everywhere. Like taking yes. the, like, oh, let me pause here. Let me let see me something. Pause. Let me see something like else uh-huh. in the moment. Um, yeah, gratitude. Sometimes I don't feel grateful. I, I might later. Right. I, but I in the later, moment, but, it's okay that it in the sucks. Moment, yeah. Yeah. And I'm not, you know, like I say to everyone, Feel all the feels like it's, yeah. it's okay that parenting was hard. Just like you yelled. It's the one. And I say the one upside to yelling is that it's like a flag saying, hey, something's out of sync in your yeah. life. It's, like, a, it's a warning it's, light. It's a red flag. It's yes. an indicator. Like notice like, me need to take a break. so we can change something. Yes. Which, you know, and then it's like, you know, I use the, the thought pattern of, you know, how kids, are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we yeah. there yet? Or why, mommy? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? And like they don't stop. How about now? 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 <laughs> <laughs> what about now? So like when I'm starting, like when I notice that I'm getting anxious or really close to getting to yell, you know, to mm-hmm. yelling or I've yelled, I start doing the why, why, why? Okay. Why do I think I yell? Like peeling back the, yeah. the onion until I get to the core. And it's like, you know, you've gotten to the real root of what's going on when you're like, <sighs> yep. <laughs> that's what's going on. And then it's like, okay, what can I, yeah. What can I do? What can now? I do? And sometimes just figuring it out is just enough to like, okay, I've acknowledged it and, um, I'm going to move on, but it's, yeah, those moments, those moments are tough. I've been cranky the last week. Yeah. And I think yesterday I finally, it took a couple of days, but I finally got to the core of like what was going on. It's like, okay. I'm done. You know, moving on. <laughs> yeah. So. I, it takes a while sometimes. If like sometimes the onion peeling can t- take time. It can. And like in those, um, you know, something in my 30 day challenge that I do is I call it like your recipe for calm. Ooh. So when, when you have a down <laughs> moment, <laughs> you know, it's really important to know for yourself, like if you have 10 seconds, what is something that gets you to yes. calm? If you have a minute, if you have a, so that if you sense that your body is starting to like, I call it like the gray rhino. Yeah. Um, rhinos are naturally calm animals, by the way, but charge. Okay. Gotcha. That's how we got to rhinos. So gray rhinos, I call like the kind of aggressive, whereas uh-huh. orange rhinos are cheerful and determined and positive. <laughs> so when I'm like going towards gray mindset, yeah, I'm like, okay, what, what can I pull from my recipe for calm to try to help me shift closer to like the orange That's awesome. mindset? Um, and it's taken me a few years to figure that out. Um, 
I used to think that a cup of hot coffee would do it. <laughs> I've learned that if I'm agitated, caffeine does not help. It's Makes amazing me- what happens when we listen to our body. Yeah. Well, I am so glad we've had this conversation. This is really, yeah, really helpful. You. I am. Um, so each episode here at Keep Calm Metheron ends with two questions. So the first question yes. is, and we've kind of answered it a couple of times, but we'll see where you go, is what are you doing for self-care? What is something that helps, you know, fill your cup up? I go on a walk every single day, um, getting outside and getting fresh air, seeing the blue sky mostly, (laughs) um, really helps. And it just gives me a chance to reflect and have, you know, some peace and quiet and listen to like podcasts or even just happy music, songs that I really, that fill my soul and that I Mm want to sing to. That's great. And what are you doing for family fun? What does fun look like? So we just started playing Scattergories together, which is so much fun. Um, And then even like we have dance parties. Or depending on my teen's mood, sometimes I honestly just act like a total goofball (laughs) and they roll their eyes at me and they don't think it's fun, but like I'm kind of poking fun at them. Uh huh. And there's this like silent understanding that mom's a total dork. Uh huh. But they do you like singing opera? What is poking, what is acting like Uh, a dork look like for you? I sing in opera. I do sing it sometimes like. The other night I imitated one of their moods, <laughs> you know, yep. um, that one was fun. Sometimes I don't necessarily talk like a baby, yeah, but I'll get like really sweet. I'll talk to them as if they were a baby. Like, oh yeah. Oh, jupu, 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 you know, um, <laughs> yep. so it's just anything that brings like a sense of like levity, yeah. you know, or I'll sing a favorite song, intentionally sing it bad. Oh yeah. Like that just they're like, yep. mom, I'm like, what? Or use the new lingo. I don't know how to <laughs> oh, use totally. it. Oh, totally. Like, I try to use the slang words wrong or try to just oh use gosh. them right. Or yeah, it's fun like, to what, like what bro? poke at huh? them. Is that the T? Like I can't even. <laughs> they use, I watched Pitch Perfect with them this weekend. Oh yeah. Oh my goodness. They were talking about how this boy was rizzing someone up. I'm like, what? And that's like hitting on but like oh. with the style I'm like okay huh so, so that's what i do there are for so fun. many words yeah so many <laughs> so that that's, is so that's much my fun tea. <laughs> so people can find you on instagram now and facebook yes, where's the best places to find you i'm mostly on facebook um it's under the name of the orange rhino i'm trying to get cool and hip and get on instagram which is the <laughs> underscore orange underscore rhino um my book is Yell Less, Love More. It just came out on audio, which is yeah. great for getting out and walking. Um, and that's really the best place to find me. Awesome. I do have a website, theorangerino.com, working on revamping that, which is just, that's great because there's all my old stories. So if you're really just feeling alone and you're like mm-hmm. the only one, you're not. Just <laughs> go read the stories in the comments and you'll you know hopefully feel a little less alone. That's fantastic. And all those links will be in the show notes too, so you can find them easily. Awesome. Well, thank Thank you so much. And I honestly believe you are exactly the right mom for your kids. So I want to say it one more time. Thank you. That is a great phrase. And I love to hear that. I'm so glad you're here. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.